Excuse me. Hi right, guys. It is a pleasant, a little bit chilly, early fall of 2020 evening here in the end times. It bugs at a jar farm. I think it is Wednesday night, September 30th, 2020. And so uh, I'm getting ready to uh, click on my nightly Twilight Zone episode to see how well, Rod Serling called it uh, 60 years ago. But before I do that, I just want to tell one of these crazy hambone Twilight Zone stories out of my own past. I was just talking to my buddy uh, on the phone, and I started to tell this story, but since he is a, a tribes member, I said, I'm just going to tell this crazy story. And you, so I don't have to bore you with it here. You can just listen to it on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So anyway, brother, this one's for you. Uh, this regards Terrence McKenna. This is, uh, I could swear I told this story before on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but I can't find it. But if I did, uh, I'm sure about 10 people watched it then. So anyway, guys, the, the details of this story are getting hazy and uh, this happened in December of 2008. So we're going back 12 years of Hambone history. So of course we have to have some backstory. I cannot tell us, I cannot just get right to the point. So we're actually going to go back to November of uh, 2007, which is when, uh, you know, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole that I followed uh, my spirit guide, Snowball the Dancing Cockatoo, is the first one who led me down the rabbit hole of YouTube, and it wasn't long before I had graduated from Snowball the Dancing Cockatoo to Terrence McKenna entered my life probably, it was probably around Thanksgiving of 2007, you know, when I was in the middle of a, uh, a successful real estate career in South Austin, Texas. I was enjoying the life of Riley, living in a beautiful home, driving a nice car. Uh, you know, how many times have I gone through this? Uh, friends, women, top shelf liquor, top shelf weed, uh, making more money than I knew what to do with, uh, living the life that 95% of the people on this planet would trade lives with uh, 13 years ago. And I had the fortune or misfortune of stumbling into the wit and wisdom of Terence McKenna. And uh, I have been cursing this man ever since. It is the only reason I'm sitting in this chair telling you this story is because of Terence McKenna. So it took Terence a little while for him to yank my head out of my ass to tell me, uh, you know, that my good job, beautiful home, all the stuff that I just talked about, that I was living the life of a clueless fucking moron. And it was Terrence, with the help of a, you know, heroic doses of psilocybin mushroom, uh, ayahuasca trips, San Pedro cactus, trips. So uh, this is all, you know, during the year 2008 is uh, when I became a doomsday prophet uh, thanks to Terrence McKenna and the various uh, what I call plant-based spirit guides that he introduced me to over the course of 2008. So anyway, um, uh, it was 
So by the summer of 2008, I had made the decision to quit my six-figure dollar job, sell my beautiful home, my five rental, well, I sold four of my five rental properties, uh, and move to the Peruvian Amazon to start my new life. Uh, living in a tiny house in the Peruvian Amazon was the plan while I waited around for global industrial civilization to collapse, which I figured, you know, I, I was never one of these people to put a, a date on things, but I thought for damn sure global industrial civilization would have collapsed by now. So anyway, uh, to the horror of all of my uh, lovable, clueless friends in Austin, Texas, I announced this intention to, uh, y you know, just to absolutely pull the plug on my life and uh, sell everything I owned and uh, move to the Peruvian Amazon to await the collapse of global industrial civilization. And, uh, <laughs> but there was the small problem I, I had to disentangle myself from my real estate career. It's not that easy just to walk out of a damn real estate career, out of a successful real estate career that you've been, you know, that you spent years building, you know, you've, you've, you've got clients, you've got contracts. My God, I had to sell five houses. This was... 2008, the summer quickly going into the fall of 2008, I had to liquidate five of my own real estate properties in addition to, you know, to closing down. So anyway, uh, this involves, uh, oh, I need to do one more backstory. To this, uh, that's the backstory on Terrence McKenna. That if anybody is wondering how I ended up in the shape I ended up in, you can thank or blame Terrence McKenna. Another part of this backstory <clears throat> is I believe it was 2006 that what I did was uh, I flipped houses. I bought foreclosures, rented them out, uh, and flipped houses. And so in, in 2006, I put in an offer on a foreclosure in South Austin, Texas. I'm not used to not getting what I wanted. And, I mean, I came in like $20,000 over the asking price of this house in South Austin, which I really wanted for my own house. I wasn't going to rent it. I was going to live there myself. And somebody beat me out. There were like 20 offers. I came in number two. That some son of a bitch somewhere had beaten me at my own game, and I had not taken kindly to this uh, being beaten at my own game in uh, in real estate uh, <laughs> <coughs> foreclosure flipping. So anyway, that's really all the backstory that we need to tell. So okay, <clears throat> let's move the clock up. It is now. The fall of 2008, so we're talking uh, 12 years ago, uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I had liquidated all of my rentals. All I had left to do was sell my own residence, my, my own beautiful home on the Green Belt in South Austin, which I called Frog Hollow. It was the last real estate transaction I was going to do. I thought in my life. Uh, so I had the place up for sale in, in the middle of the fall of uh, 2008. And ironically enough, this probably would have been October, late October, anywhere, somewhere, 
I uh, got an, a verbal offer on this place from none other than a Peruvian, a, uh, a guy from Peru who had moved to Texas was looking for a house so I needed to sell my house to a Peruvian so I could move to Peru. So uh, I was going back and forth, back and forth with this fucker, but I could not get the son of a bitch to sign on the dotted line. He did not have his own real estate agent. Uh, so I was in the very dangerous position of selling my primary residence to someone who did not have an agent. So I had to be very careful and could not be high pressure. So I was doing everything I could short of taking a fucking two by four up to this uh, Peruvian's head to get him to sign on the fucking bottom line. And uh, I really needed to wrap this up because, you know, my real estate license expired at the end of each year. It was going to expire on December 31st, 2008, and I didn't want to have to get my license and do all of that shit because I just had this one house to sell, but it had to close by December 31st, 2008, so I could take my goddamn money and run to Peru. So anyway, I'm going back and forth with this son of a bitch for like two or three weeks. And finally, I get him to, he promises me that we are going to sign, that he is going to sign on the dotted line. I had already signed the contract as the seller. I had already put my fucking signature on the contract. All he had to do was sign it and deliver it back to me, the signed copy. He had the signed copy for like two weeks. And uh, so anyway, I had these tenants living in the house. Uh, I was living in the house too. I mean, we were sharing the house. Uh, so I had this nice young couple living in the house. And uh, they were getting pretty pissed off about, you know, showing the house. Like, like damn, Hamlet, are you ever going to sell this house? Uh, you know, they were going to live there. I told them they could be there till the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. They were sick and tired uh, of being bothered by real estate agents. So I remember I was going, I believe it was the last weekend of the Texas Renaissance Fair, in East Texas. I went to this Renaissance Fair. I told my tenants, I said, I am going to be back. I left on uh, Friday morning. I said, I'm going to the Renaissance Fair. I'm going to be back about midnight Sunday night. And you tell any real estate agent who calls on this house that the house is sold and do not show this house to anybody else, blah, blah, blah. They were thrilled to hear that. That was their instruction. If this phone rings, tell any fucking real estate agent the house is sold. And this guy promised me that on Tuesday, we were going to meet at lunch. He was going to sign his offer and we were going to close by uh, December 31st. So it was now Thanksgiving weekend, I believe. It was the Sunday after Thanksgiving or the Sunday before Thanksgiving, one of those two. And uh, <clears throat> so I get home about midnight Sunday night, and my tenants are there, and they're pissed off. And they go, uh, I, 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 I thought you said that you had sold the house, blah, blah, blah. I said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, at 9 o'clock this morning, on Sunday morning, a total fucking stranger is banging on the door wanting to look at the house. And I said, well, did, uh, did a real estate agent call you or anything? They said, no phone call, no nothing. We're lying in bed asleep at 9 o'clock this morning. Some idiot's banging on the door insisting 
that he wants to look at this house. And I said, well, did you tell him that the house was sold and to go fuck himself? And they go, no, you know, I mean, they were nice guys. They said, we let him in and he looked around and he said that he wanted to buy your house. He said, tell the man that I am going to buy his house. So this is what they told me. Uh, and they gave me his number and said, you know, the guy uh, is waiting for you to call him and he's pretty insistent. So whatever. <clears throat> so I call this guy, this total stranger I had never heard of, no real estate agent, no nothing. I, compl I had a I had a first name. His name was Ken. It was Ken Adams was this fellow's name. Ken Adams and his phone number. And I call him the next morning and I, you know, I introduced who I was and oh yeah, he was waiting for my call. He was all excited about talking to me. And he goes, I want to buy your house. And I said, well, there's a problem. The house is sold. And so I, you know, I told him the, uh, the story of this buyer from uh, Peru and whatnot, and, uh, and he found out that I was scheduled to meet with the Peruvian dude on uh, Tuesday, the next day. And it, so he goes, so I still have tonight to get you to sign an offer. Is that right? And I, and I, and I kind of laughed. I said, buddy, it ain't going to happen. So anyway, I asked him, I, I said, dude, I, I, said the, I said the damn house has been on the market for like over two months. And uh, I, I said, why haven't, why did it take you so long to get in touch with me? I said, I said, your real estate agent has to have known about this house. And he goes, well, I don't have a real estate agent. He goes, I'm not in the market to buy a house. And I said, oh, really? I said, don't tell me that you're getting ready to tell me here at Thanksgiving of 2020, I mean, of 2008, that you need to sell a house in order to buy mine. And he goes, well, yeah, I guess I am going to have to sell my house. So I asked him about the house. Guess what fucking house the son of a bitch lived in? He was the son of a bitch who beat me out on the foreclosure. He was the guy who bought the house in 2006 that I wanted. That very house. I could not believe this shit. I, I, I said, brother, I said, forget it. It is not going to happen. We've got to, we, we've got to uh, be closed up by December 31st. I keep trying to shine him on. He won't let me hang up on him. He's very... Uh, very insistent. And so we're talking and I said, well, how the, you know, about how the hell he ever heard about the house. So the guy tells me he was it, nowhere in his mind was he looking for a house to buy. He was perfectly happy in the house he lived in. He, he, he had, it had never crossed his fucking mind to even buy a house. So he had this. He had a daughter whose friend lived down the street from me. So uh, what happened was, his daughter was going over to visit her, the girl who lived down the street from me. So he goes. So I took my daughter over to whatever her name's house down the street, and her mother mentioned you really ought to go check out this house for sale down the street that I really think you would like the house. Uh, that the property is absolutely gorgeous, which it was. I mean, Frog Hollow, I mean, it, un it, it was one of the, you know, prettiest properties in South Austin. The house wasn't that great, but you know, it was the, it was the property that it was on at the, you know, on the green belt at the end of a cul-de-sac and all that. And uh, so he told her, he, like, I, I have no interest in buying a house. He's out taking his daughter to visit a friend. She goes, well, you should just at least drive by it. So he goes, what the hell? 
So he drove by my house and he said that just something told him he was going to buy that house. Out of the blue. Never thought about buying a house, selling his house, anything completely out of left field uh, from the universe. Uh, something knocked him over the head and said, Ken, you are going to buy that house. So we're sitting there talking and I'm listening to this crazy story and I'm trying to figure out how do I get rid of this guy and out of nowhere in the middle of this real estate discussion, out of fucking nowhere, this is on a Monday morning, uh, he says to me completely out of left field, he goes, does the name Terrence McKenna mean anything to you? Completely out of, you don't get that rat like that. This poor dog will never end up getting that rat because it's on the other side of the wall. So he goes, does the name Terrence McKenna mean anything to you? <laughs> well, that shut me up. Uh, as you know how hard it is to shut me up. And so I just kind of went through the same song and dance that I just told and told Ken that it was Terrence McKenna was the reason I was selling my house. That if I had never met Terrence McKenna, I would not be selling my house. And I told, you know, the whole story I just told you basically. And, uh, you know, I, I said, Terrence McKenna is the closest thing I have ever had to a guru. It was Terrence that led me to selling this house. And, 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 uh, and he kind of laughed and he goes, I just thought that, uh, that you might know Terrence. And I said, you know, do you, did you know Terrence? Well, it turns out, according to this guy, and, and I believe him, uh, Ken Adams, uh, I guess you can vet him, uh, he claims that he was one of Terrence McKenna's best friends. If you go on YouTube, I know you can buy it on Amazon. I don't know if the full feature film is out. He, Ken did a uh, one of these wild documentaries uh, featuring Terrence called Alien Dream Time. Alien Dream Time. Ken's into all sorts of things, space aliens and everything. So anyway, uh, it turns out that Ken Adams for years was good friends with Terrence McKenna and uh, things got really weird that he lived in, uh, he was living in San Francisco and, and things turned really fucking weird. I'm not going to tell all of, all of Ken's story. So anyway, he had to make a radical sudden change in his own life and he kind of went undercover, got the fuck out of San Francisco, got out of that San Francisco scene and came and hid in Texas. He figured he would flee to Texas and he had been kind of underground for years. Uh, my guess is that Ken Adams is not even his real name, although that's the name that he uses on the uh, that he uses on the documentary. I notice. So anyway, so Ken and his wife uh, ended up buying my house. So they came in and brought the uh, <clears throat> offer in that night, and uh, so here's the deal I made. I, I made with Ken. Because he had to sell his house. This was now going into December of 2008. If you remember what the financial and the real estate market looked like in December of 2008, he had one week to sell his house. You know, that foreclosure that I lost two years earlier, one week to sell that house with a closing date 
before December 31st. It was it was an absolute joke to even suggest that. And um, so anyway, we got his house up on the market as quick as we could. And uh, you can imagine how furious the guy from Peru was. And by the way, Ken's offer was $8,000 higher than the guy from Peru. Uh, so, I, so that was $8,000. And then, of course, take a wild guess who sold the house he never bought. Uh, there were actually multiple offers on that fucking house in seven days. So I immediately called in this buddy of mine uh, whose money came from fracking. Uh, I won't use my buddy's name because he is still trying. He's very embarrassed that his money comes from fracking. But I knew damn well that he could buy this house. So I called him up and uh, told him in that. And he owns that house to this day. He has owned that house for 12 years. He bought that place for $152,000. My guess it's worth $352,000 now. And uh, so... We, uh, he bought, he paid all cash for that house, and then Ken bought my house, uh, and we closed on the afternoon of December 30th, 2008, and until I bought the Hambone Hilton one year ago, that was the last real estate transaction I ever had in the U.S., when Terrence McKenna was my real estate agent and uh, probably shouldn't be putting this P.S., this sad P.S. on the end of this because this is kind of Ken's dirty line. If, if, if Ken Adams, if, if, if you just let me know that you have a problem with the, the P.S. on this story, I will take this off and uh, take off this PS. So what happened was, so Ken and his and his uh, wife and daughter move into the house, and then uh, two years later, Ken is big and Burning Man. So uh, he was living in the house. Everything was fine. He loved the place. Uh, as far as he knows, he had a happy marriage and home life, so he goes to Burning Man, and he went to San Francisco for a few days before Burning Man in, uh, 10 years ago, so that would have been September of 2010, I believe, might have been September of 2011, but anyway... So he's, his wife takes him to the airport. He gets on the plane. He, he lands in San Francisco, goes to his hotel, and he has a message from his wife, do not bother coming back. I am divorcing you. Don't, basically, don't ever come back to Frog Hollow again. And the last time I saw Ken was, when was the last time I saw Ken? 2012, 2013. Uh, he seemed to be in pretty good spirits and had uh, said that is the, uh, that is the PS to that whole crazy adventure. And uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, uh, anyway, this could only happen in the Twilight Zone, and with that, I'm going to go see if uh, Rod Serling can top that one. And, uh, anyway, just one more crazy ham bone story for the vault. Bye, guys.